California. Take care. We'll catch you again. Uh, N6 VNI, K8, November Yankee clear. Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Today I thought we'd take a look at a microphone that you've been seeing in most of my videos on the 7100. Uh, this microphone is the one that comes with the radio, but in pretty much all of my videos on this, or most of the recent ones, you've been seeing this microphone. So this one is the HM198, and it just has the push to talk and up and down buttons on the top and it does have a little switch on the side here that changes the audio response a little bit to, you can adjust it for your voice well adjust there's two selections and i think it just switches a little capacitor in and out but this one is the one you've been seeing in pretty much all of my videos. This is the HM151 remote mic. This is an optional mic for the radio. Just plugs into the same microphone connector and the radio automatically recognizes this mic, but there are a couple of settings that you can do for this. And there's also a possibly cheaper version of this that you might be able to use. I'll talk about that toward the end of the video. Anyway, for now, let's take a look at uh, some of the settings that relate to this microphone. You don't need to do anything in terms of settings to have the radio recognize it. It automatically recognizes that you've plugged in the remote mic. But there is one audio setting that you can't use, and we'll take a look at that here in a second also. So let's go into the settings page. We're going to do that with the set button here. And we are going to go into the function, which is down on the third page, and actually... Yeah, we'll squelch that. I'm going to just turn this up so you can hear the beeps. So in the set menu, it's down on the third page. You're going to go to function. And then under function, down at the very last page, you see here RC mic. So this is all the way at the bottom of the function options. And right above it, this is the one audio setting that you can't use. Uh, mic AF out, audio frequency out. There's an option on here, if you turn this on, and by the way, the default is off, so if you haven't touched anything or changed this, you'll be fine. If you turn this on, the radio will actually output audio out of one of the microphone pins, and you would use that if you had a speaker mic that you wanted to wire into the radio. You'd have to make your own connector and adapter. But if you had a speaker mic, you can turn this on and the radio will send audio out one of the pins. You can see that in the manual. I'll put that page up so you can see where that is. But if you're using the remote mic, that pin that's used for this is used for the remote mic. It's actually the pin that it uses to detect that the remote mic is plugged in instead of the standard one. So this option's not available. Then if we go down one, you see, uh, let me back up there, um, RC mic, which is remote control microphone. So if you do have that mic, you press this, and then on the microphone, there are two function keys, F1 and F2. You can program these to be a variety of different functions depending on how you use the radio and what your preference are. And you'll see here, I have F1 programmed to be voice transmit and it's voice transmit memory one. So if I press this, I'm not gonna press it. If I press this, it'll just transmit whatever I've got in the voice transmit memory. I like that because if I'm driving around and I'm doing a bunch of CQs or whatever, I, I'll program a CQ message in here and then I can just kind of have this microphone in my hand while I'm driving and send CQ. And then F2, I have programmed to memory pad or memo pad, that's this button right here, the M pad button. And I use that a lot when I'm driving because if you press and hold that, it will save whatever frequency you're on into one of the five memo pad memories. And I did a video about memories and I talked about the memo pad memories. I will make sure there's a link to that one in the description if you want to go back and look at that. But the memo pads, it just 
it's a very quick way to remember frequencies. If you're tuning around and you hear somebody, you can press and hold it and then you just press it briefly and it'll go back in sequence to whatever memo pad memories you've saved. So again, when operating mobile, I find that really handy. Now we'll just go take a look in here on F2, these are the options, and the options are the same for both F1 and F2 in terms of what you program them to. You can, if you pick the dashes up here, that makes it nothing, it won't do anything. So you can program it to be the preamp attenuator button, so that's basically this button on the radio. You can program it to be the automatic gain control, so it'll set it in slow, medium, and fast each time you press it noise blanker on and off, noise reduction on and off, the notch filter, RIT on and off, um, auto-tune, and then uh, RX into CS. This puts the whatever the received call is on D-Star into the uh, memory. That's kind of a D-Star function. Auto-tune is where the radio will auto-tune a CW signal. I don't. I know there's people that do CW mobile. I don't know how they do it mobile, but that would actually adjust the tone on a CW signal to bring it right into the center of whatever you have the filter set for. So that's definitely not one I would use. Some people might. TS, TS, I don't even know what TS is. Um, I should know this, because I'm trying to act like I'm really smart and know a lot about this radio. I have no idea what TS is, folks. I'll look that up and I'll put some notes in the description. And then MPAD, of course, is what I have. Memory clear, again, I'm not sure why I would want that in the remote mic. Bank, that is the bank switch here to change which memory bank you're on. So that one could be useful if you're using this a lot to switch memories. If you put the bank knob each time you press it, it's gonna go to the next bank. Split and actually split and I think AB are the two defaults for F1 and F2. I don't remember which one is which. Split puts the radio in split mode. If you do a lot of uh, DXing on HF where you need to operate split, that might be handy. AB, again for HF, might be handy, switches you between the A and B VFOs. Duplex just changes your duplex to be you know, simplex, plus or minus. So if you're doing a lot of two meter or repeater work where you're just doing it without using pre-programmed memories, you might want that one. Tone and digital squelch, that turns the tone functions or digital squelch functions on. So again, this would be if you want to use the microphone to program two meter or UHF frequencies on FM, you can skip through tone, tone squelch, digital squelch, and so on. Compressor turns the compressor on and off. Transmit bandwidth, this cycles through your choices for transmit bandwidth. Meter will change the meter function. DR is the D star repeater button, so this will bring up your D star repeater list. That's something for a future video. And then the from two in the uh, D star, if you're in the DR mode, then this switches you between the from and two, so you can set the repeater you're trying to go through and if you're trying to call somebody. Scan, if you want to start a scan, either memory or VFO. And then finally the voice transmit. So those are all the options. They're exactly the same for both F1 and F2. So you got a lot of options here, depending on how you like to use your radio. And then the one other setting for the remote mic is mode select. So if I push the mode button here, and I'll show you this in a minute, the mode button will change the mode of the radio. And as I keep pressing the button, it'll just cycle through lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, AM, FM, so on and so on and so on. In the mode select, the default is it will select all the possible modes. If you have some modes that you're not gonna be using, and actually I haven't touched this, we're gonna change this right now. I'm gonna turn off CW because I'm not gonna use CW mode while I'm mobile. I'm gonna turn off RIDI. I think I'm gonna turn off AM. I can always select that mode from the screen if I want. So now if I push the mode button on the remote mic, it'll cycle through just the modes that are checked. Let's go back. So that's how I've got it set. That's really all the settings that you have in the set menus for the remote mic. So let's get back out of here and see how some of this works. One of the things that's nice is the up down button instead of tuning on the main dial. Uh, whoop, that's loud. 
Eh, I'll leave a little audio here. Sorry, I don't have the audio piped directly into the video here, so you're listening to it through the mic. One of the nice things is that if I'm trying to get right on a frequency, I and you can adjust the steps for this, but I have the up-down set to go in 500 hertz steps. So, sorry, that's 50 hertz steps. And if you press and hold it, it'll tune, so... I can actually, again, if I'm driving here, I can I can tune up and down without having to take my hand off the wheel and I can just tune around. Sometimes it's not easy. Uh, so you can tune around with this. And then, let's say this is one that, oh, this guy's got a pretty strong signal. I might want to try to talk to him, but I want to tune around some more. Well, then I can press and hold F2, which is M-pad, and it just saved that. So now, if I tune some more, let's just say that I've tuned around the band a while and I haven't found anything, so I want to go back to that guy. If I just briefly press this, F2, it takes me back to that one that I just stored. And if I store several, so let's uh, we'll just say I found one here, press and hold it. I'm not sure you can hear the double beeps. Oh, look at that, there is somebody here. So we'll save this one. And we'll just tune up a little further here. Oh, there's somebody. Okay, so I'll remember that one. Remember? Yeah, I'll remember that one. So now, if I just briefly press F2, it's just going to cycle through each of those that I've remembered. So I have mine set so there's only five memories. For mobile operation, I find that really handy because then I can cycle through things without having to remember where something was or be fumbling around trying to write something down. So let's test this other program change I made. I set the mode. So if you look at the mode here now, this is going to go, we're in upper sideband. Now we went to FM, wide FM, digital voice, upper sideband. Unfortunately, there's not a way to go between upper and lower sideband, but normally, the, you know, when you're on each band, if I switch to 40 meters, it's going to be on lower sideband. So it skipped CW, it skipped RIDI, uh, what else? It skipped AM. So now my mode button will just change to the modes that I want. Filter, you can change the filter settings. So each time I press this, it'll just cycle through filter one, two, and three. So you can change your filter settings. And then on the mic, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up in the video. All the bands are listed on the mic. So if I'm not entering a frequency, you see the numbers for the frequencies here. But then you've also got the band. So if I want to go to 160 meters, which I wouldn't be doing mobile, likely, but you just... Um, press the button for the band you want to go to and it'll go directly to the band. So if I want to go to two meters, I press 144 and I'm on two meters or 430, or we can go back to 20 meters. <clears throat> so all the bands are right on here and, and pretty easily accessible. VM is this button. So I've got my voice, uh, sorry, VFO memory. So that just switches me back and forth between VFO mode and memory mode. Memory write, and eh, probably I'm not going to use memory write so much from the mic button. I'm going to not try to do that. Well, at least certainly not while I'm driving. Uh, tuner slash call, and again, a lot of these are duplicates of actual buttons. So tuner slash call is the tuner slash call button. So if I press and hold the tuner call button, I have an external tuner connected to this, which you may remember if you saw my walkthrough of my setup. I'll put a link to that in the uh, description as well. And also, I'll put that up on the screen here at the end.
that took a little while. I haven't, I have not, I didn't go out and set my antenna up or anything before this. So, um, so press and hold that and it tuned and now I'm tuned for the band here. So, um, so that's a, a nice one. Speech. I don't really use speech much. I mean, obviously it's more for sight impaired hams, although if you're driving and you maybe didn't want to necessarily try to read the display or read something. If I press the uh, speech button. S zero one four point two five six four two megahertz USB. So if you wanted to read out the frequency for you, and the first thing you heard on there, I don't, if you didn't catch it, it was S0. It's telling you the signal strength on the receive meter. And the other function of this, the speech is also, and it's, it's a duplicate of this button up here on the control head. If you press and hold this, it will lock. Oh, that said mic lock, that's interesting. Oh, how about that? Well, how about that? This does not do, I'm learning right along with you guys, so this doesn't do the same thing as pressing and holding it on the control head. This actually locks the mic, which I'm not sure, oh, ah, it locks the mic from changing frequencies or changing bands, so it it functionally does the same thing as the lock button on the control head, except instead of locking these controls, it locks all the microphone controls. So I guess that makes sense, but I didn't realize that. All right, so that's something new. Let's see, what else do we have on here? Oh, G-E-N-E, -E, that's general coverage. So whatever, if I, if I had something in the general coverage, whatever the last time this, I've got an aircraft frequency in here. Um, and you've got your, oh, that's the other thing is you have your three band stacking registers for every band. So like if I go to 20 meters, if I press it again, it goes to the second. And if I press it again, it goes to the third. So it'll go to all three band stacking registers for each band. And then the bottom right button is frequency input. So if I press that one, now I can actually just enter a frequency. So if I want to go to 14, 265, zero, zero, and then I press enter, you can enter a frequency and go to it directly. So that's pretty much it. Um, there is no audio uh, setting on this one, like on the stock mic, so you can't change your audio characteristics. There's settings for your audio on the radio. We'll cover that in another video as well. But anyway, that's the remote mic, the HM151. When I get back inside uh, to the shack, I'll show you what may be a cheaper alternative. And I haven't tested this, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Anyway, that's the remote mic. I find it very nice and very handy for mobile operation. Back in the truck, I mentioned that there might be a cheaper alternative to the ICOM remote mic. I've since done a little bit more research, and I think that's probably not the case. So here's the ICOM microphone. This is on the Amazon website. It's about $136. And the alternative that I thought might be available is the microphone that comes with the Zygu G90. This is a QRP, well, 20 watt, HF radio, Chinese radio. And if you look at the microphone, it looks virtually identical to the ICOM HM151 mic, except, of course, for the ICOM badge on the bottom. And I thought maybe this would be a lower priced alternative, but a couple of things. One, I haven't found this mic that you can buy separately new. I'm sure it's available somewhere, but I haven't seen it anywhere that I could find. I have seen it on eBay, but I haven't seen it from, you know, a new dealer anywhere. 
And also, I have since found this website from AB5N, and he talks about upgrades for a variety of microphones, and he happens to mention in here the mic supplied with the Zygu QRP radio looks like the ICOM HM151. It is not. Inside, the circuit board is totally different. So I don't think I would risk trying this other mic in place of the ICOM one. So for now, I think my recommendation is stick with the ICOM mic. If you can find a better deal on it somewhere, I'll have a link to this in the, the description. But I've been happy with the ICOM mic. And then uh, one other comment I'll make about that AB5N website. He talks about the ICOM mic on here. And... This uh, fella apparently makes upgrades. He puts a different mic element in. On the ICOM mic, he actually puts a foam pad in there to help the uh, audio response inside the actual microphone case. And he offers upgrades for a bunch of mics. I am not affiliated with this person. I don't know anything about him, and I don't know anything about these upgrades. But I am thinking about maybe doing a little more research on the icon mic and I may look into getting that one if I do that I'll let you know how that works out but anyway stick with the icon mic for now is the best advice I can give that's all I've got for this time if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful I would appreciate a click on the like button if you're finding the channel useful please consider subscribing and you can also click on that bell icon so you'll get notified when new videos come out. You'll find links to the videos and to the microphone and any other things that I mentioned in the description. You'll also find a link there for the companion website to this channel. And until next time, I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.